Um, it definitely did not look like a commercial plane. I didn't see any windows on the sides. And as far as I knew, when I saw it coming down, I was like, well, LaGuardia is pretty far away, and that plane is really slow. And uh, definitely very low. And um, I'm completely panicked. I'm <laughs> you're freaking out. I can't well, believe what I just saw. We are all shaken by this. We are uh, watching the video now back live. Have, as you can see from a distance there, until we get our cameras on the ground, uh, producing material which we can put on the air. A pretty limited view, so we have no idea what the evacuation procedure is in the building. It's, we it's do know. Difficult. We're listening in the background uh, at this time. All elevators are out in both towers, according to the rescue workers on the scene. They put out an urgent call for Scott air packs uh, because they're climbing smoke-filled stairwells. They've got to go very high up to get to the target locations, and they're talking about people trapped in the smoke there. And this, of course, is reminiscent of, of, of 1993 when the explosions occurred at the Trade Towers last time. Exactly. John, is it standard operating procedure you mentioned that all of the other principal government buildings in the city, Gracie Mansion, the mayor's official residence... The FBI is pursuing reports that one or both of the planes were hijacked and the crash is the result of a suicide mission. That comes on the heels of last Friday's warning from the State Department about possible terrorist attack is speculation right now as to the cause and to and the effects of this tragedy we'll actually put it on the screen again very slowly so that we can see it come across screen are you able to identify specifically the type of aircraft by looking at this videotape as it comes across can we roll I'm, that please i'm watching that right uh, as it comes across the screen and uh it it is more than likely not a boeing 737 that, uh, that profile, Peter, is very close to an Airbus uh, A320, A319. And who flies the Airbus 320, 318? We have quite a few airlines. Okay, so... Uh, uh, very few private ones. All right, and, and, with, and John uh, comports a little bit here hey, with at least these right uh, initial reports that the FBI is investigating reports of a hijacking uh, just before the second crash uh, occurred. We had no... Um, John, let me just ask you one other technical question about just flying in the World Trade Centers. When yes. the first, when the first uh, incident occurred, um, it was reasonable for people to suspect that there that was an accident. Uh, expecting that statement any moment now. I can tell you here in Sarasota with those traveling with the president, they are trying to sift through all of the amazing... ...que ha ocurrido, el presidente cambió completamente su expresión en ese instante para... Eh... ...what would be a sensitive time if he was sitting in front of a bunch of school children and not wanting to scare the children. Well, precisely, and uh, the, the president uh, has a way. All right, Jamie, thanks. We're looking again, if you're just joining us, as both towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, where two planes have crashed into, see the impact on one side of the building and the residual damage coming out of another side of the building, and, and one can only imagine that that one occurred shortly after 9 o'clock in the morning. How many people were in the building at the time of the impact? And, and it's a large plane. We're told it was either a 737. Some reports that the first plane was a 757. Some kind of Airbus. That We're just getting initial reports of that. And again, we must tell you that we're trying to get as much information, but it is trickling in at a very slow pace. Unfortunately, we'll be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. The second question, what can he do for the NBA? I think it's a shot in the arm for the league, which has... ...top of buildings to prevent this kind of thing. This is a very 
rare event. It's a large plane did the same thing. Right. And we've been talking with our correspondents all, all morning about sort of if another incident could happen on the heels of these two. What kind of measures are in place to prepare waited from the Pentagon? Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's given us the official word yet, uh, but uh, I think of casualties or injuries or even confirmation that these planes were hijacked. Nonetheless, we do have a couple of reports, one from AP, one from Reuters, reporting that an American Airlines plane was hijacked, that a United Airlines plane was hijacked, supposedly. Laura Bush is now speaking with Ted Kennedy. Uh, a hearing that was scheduled uh, for her to appear at has been canceled. Uh, we would uh, be watching very carefully to see whether she is also asked to leave the Capitol and go to a safe place. Yeah, Brian Wilson, the Capitol is being evacuated, we're told, and uh, clearly that, that shot that uh, we have on our screen now, this is the Pentagon just across the river from Washington, D.C. you got to believe that uh, it has happened again, another large airliner, perhaps hijacked, perhaps part of some uh, widespread plan, apparently slamming into at least the area around the Pentagon, along with... Uh, uh, on top of the glass canopy, the plastic, plexiglass canopy outside of the building and onto the street, uh, there are fire trucks all around. The firefighters are either inside the building or standing uh, back from it because of the debris. And now, uh, this just began about four minutes ago, uh, uh, people having to jump, apparently, to escape uh, the flames. I thought at first it was debris, but now uh, looking uh, at one after another, probably I've seen... Uh, also seek to the left of your screen, smoke billowing. Again, former Governor Mario Cuomo of New York is on the phone with us. Governor, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, let me just get your reaction at this point. And anyone still in the air is going to get shot down. Uh, but uh, all aircraft flights in the United States have been canceled. All planes currently in the air have been ordered to land at the nearest available airport. I don't know how they will handle flights coming from overseas. Uh, they will the uh, Lincoln Tunnel is closed. All New York airports are closed. And now, of course, all plane flights. Stretchers, security forces are evacuating the building right now. And, uh, and according to the officials uh, uh, here at the Pentagon, uh, they still don't know exactly what it was. But as you reported, Katie, eyewitnesses reported that, in fact, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And, Mick, any idea? I, I, I wasn't quite sure if you said this about the number of people who might have been hurt or worse in this. No idea at all, Katie. As you know, having worked here on any given day, this is a small city, 25 to 30,000. The camera and the eye don't see precisely what is happening. We have now had eyewitness reports from our sources in Washington say they did see a plane crash in the vicinity of the Pentagon. We're looking at it um, from the western, from the Washington end, uh, which would be to the east of the Pentagon, slightly to the north east of, east of the Pentagon itself. And it looks very much as if there is fire in the courtyard itself in that central quad. But you can see a small plume of smoke on the on the northern side of the building as well. At least I think it's the north. Yes, it is the northern side of the building. As we've been watching down at the southern tip of Manhattan. Um, Jane Clayson is with me here in New York, and, and I apologize for, for talking throughout, but you, you've been watching. Go ahead, Jane. Well, I just wonder how many people are in the building right now. We haven't been able to assess if people have been coming out of the building, if there have been people on the ground. Uh, one man reportedly had some, uh, some burns from some, some debris that had fallen from the building, but we still haven't been able to assess if there are injuries or Obviously, there are many hundreds, or if not... Confirmation from ABC's John McCarthy at the Pentagon that it was a commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft, um, that was hijacked out of Boston, which could have been any time before uh, 9 o'clock this morning, because the first... This, they immediately get on the line with the CIA, the various intelligence agencies, trying to... God! Oh, my God! sure exactly what happened but it was another explosion on the far side of one of the buildings from where we're standing the, ver the, the reverberation and another explosion on the right hand side another building has gone another building has gone up on the right hand side of the road people are now running down the street we're not sure if that was another explosion or if that was advanced debris joining me also is Jim Plant Jim you're also a witness of what happened 
Tell me exactly what you saw from your vantage point across the street. Uh, I was just across Liberty and, uh, and West here, and I saw the second plane hit the uh, uh, Tower 2. It looked like a 737. It uh, hit a glancing blow, it didn't hit it direct. I don't know where the rest of the plane went, uh, but it went in, fireball came out, and it hit lower than the first uh, plane, which hit uh, the upper floors. Jim, thank you very much. At this point, as you can it tell, it does appear that there has been a third in explosion in the area happened. of the World exactly Trade Center. There was first one plane that hit one of the Twin Towers, a second plane, each about one hour ago, and now a third explosion. Ashley Banfield is in Manhattan. Ashley, did you see or hear anything just moments God. ago? Oh my God, Chris, this is incredible. I, I, I'm looking right at it. I'm, what are you seeing, Ashley? Well, I saw the explosion for one. Could you feel it? Everybody, I, I can smell it. Uh, everyone around screamed at the time that it happened. It's just unbelievable. I can't see that it's another building. It looks almost in the same same position as the second bomb or the second explosion. But it, it's what, unbelievable. What's the scene around you? What are people doing? Most people, as I said earlier, are absolutely aghast. I mean, there's, there's, are they running? Are no they? one's running. No, I'm not close enough at this point to be seeing that. I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be showered with debris from my position here. I'm too far north of it, but I have a bird's eye view of what's happening. And this is what the route that I'm on is the, is the emergency. What we think we can see, I, I want to stress it's, it's tough to. Hello? Yeah, David Lee, what can you tell us? John, uh, the scene is horrific. One of the two. Tommy screamed. It was just a, a, a chorus of, oh my God, from everyone standing around. I'm, I'm, in, I'm walking, so. What I'm hearing are a lot of people whose cars are parked, who've got their radios tuned to the local news stations and trying to catch up on, on just exactly what's happening. But now I'm seeing people running. But I don't think it has that. No, I really don't think that they're running from the area. We're too far away to be in, you know, in the direct line of any debris. But we certainly have the most perfect vantage point for that explosion. It was unbelievable. And the smoke now is... It's so thick. It's just incredible. And we can see from our picture here, Ashley, uh, and our picture, well, we've gotten it back, but there is a huge cloud of smoke virtually enveloping the downtown area of Manhattan. That is the Wall Street area. It is in the Battery Park City, lower Manhattan. A series now of three explosions, two planes. Uh, first, one flew into one tower of the Twin Towers, then a second some minutes later and just moments ago, a third explosion in the area of the World Trade Center. In addition, let's bring you up to date. There was an explosion at one of the Twin Towers has collapsed. That was the explosion. It apparently was not a third independent explosion. It was not a bomb. It was not a plane. But there has been a collapse of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. You are talking about a 110-story building. Uh, on any given day, as many as uh, 100,000 people can be there in their offices or visiting uh, the World Trade Center. It is one of the most uh, visible sites on the skyline of New York City. It is a main center of commerce, and there has apparently been a collapse of one of the two towers of the World Trade Center. This may be one of the worst tragedies ever to strike this country. One of the World Trade Centers having been struck by a plane in an apparent terrorist attack has now collapsed. You are talking about a 1,377 foot skyscraper, uh, 110 stories high, and judging by the debris and smoke that you are seeing there, it is now abundantly clear that the reports we are getting may well be true that one of the Twin Towers has collapsed and the other one continues to burn. The that could have been done it, to that part of Manhattan and it's got to be beyond the control certainly of, of the emergency services and everyone else in the city of New York's ability to, to uh, well. I don't know, I don't know anyone who could handle this, David. I'm no. We must be looking at Washington right yeah. now. Loaded. I ran as fast as I could, went inside of a building about a block away. I stood in the building for a couple of seconds and then all of a sudden the building started filling up, filling up with smoke. I was with a bunch of law enforcement officers. We couldn't get out of the building because everything was locked up. And then I came out and everything was filled with ash and it looks like I'm 
Looks like I'm in a surreal movie. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion. Then then the building, the rolling sound sounded like the building collapsed. Were, were there other people? There must have been a lot of people on the ground nearby when it happened. Houston's Logan Airport scheduled to go to LAX. It left at 8 a.m. this morning. 45 minutes later, it was explosion. A huge rumbling cloud of smoke and fire came across Church Street and then started billowing this way and all we saw was was people were people running in this direction everyone law enforcement people a woman pushing a baby carriage this is actually a, we believe debris from one of the planes that hit one of the towers on the world trade center can you tell me what you saw what you heard so no, you all right all right thank you. where were, where were you sir when that happened Right on the street. <laughs> what did you see? What did you hear? It felt like another plane coming. Everybody took cover to run. We ran down the subway, but the dust followed us down there. Were there underneath. a lot of people in the subway? Uh, no, not that many, because they already had evacuated before. Did you see people, anyone in danger, anyone getting hit when this? Not back there, yeah, but I was running. I mean, there was nothing you can do, because you just saw the thing coming right over. Have you seen, were you able to see the tower after? No. What do you mean? Since it happened now? Since oh, the fire? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The streets have been shut down. Uh, there was very little traffic on the streets except for emergency vehicles going one way or the other. So there was not a lot of vehicle traffic in this area, but there were a lot of pedestrians on almost every single corner taking photographs and, and just looking at the building, which was still smoking and still on fire. This poor woman. Wow. Rick Leventhal is the one reporting on the, the ground. He's not able to hear me at this moment. Uh, but Rick... Just the, just the sound of a plane. Star jets, star jets. Star jets. All right. What, what are you guys doing right now? What's your, what's your assignment? What, what's your assignment? Help people. Are there a lot of injured? The, uh, the the dust is still thick in the air. What, what that guy is covered with is, is this stuff that's all over the street. Just thick soot, ash. Just came roaring down here in a huge cloud from the World Trade Center. You see just the, the survivors, if you will. Are you able to talk? Can we just talk to you about what happened? I was that when we exploded. You were right there at the building? Yes, I'm able to try. A lot of people trapped. EMT. This guy needs help. Rick Leventhal is not able to hear me, but from his vantage point on the ground, I think it's not clear to him what's fairly clear to us, our vantage point from the helicopter, that the top of Tower 1, one world stairs, and then the south towers appears to be the one that was hit uh, the second time. That has the observation deck. Uh, that is a uh, is a obviously popular tourist attraction uh, for, for for people. So clearly, as we see, a pandemonium. But uh, you know, the uh, John, the uh, FBI, and the uh, New York City Police Department have the Joint Terrorist Task Force. They have uh, obviously experience with this. They were able to solve uh, the others, and I'm confident, and we should be confident that. Latin, where these scenes of chaos and utter confusion are just mind numbing. Rick, uh, go ahead. Rick is not able to hear me, but this is the scene in Lower Manhattan where, where the upper Again, floors of the World Trade Center, Church Tower Street. One, apparently have come. I saw the two buildings. I think it was a, it was a bomb because it's two of them. Anyway, when I got there, I tried to save people because I'm a doctor. When I tried to save people, in the moment we heard a big explosion coming down. Everything just went black. Everything came down, glass are popping. People got hurt, stuff went on top of them. And it was a big explosion and everything got dark, real dark like snow. You can see behind me, oh, this is not snow, it's, this is all from the building. It was a terrible nightmare. Where exactly were you standing when this happened? I was standing right in front of the Wells Trade Center. So, uh, it's just like, it's like rubble and dust, like inches thick and like paper, <clears throat> paper, <clears throat> paper everywhere and they just moved us out. 
How many people do you think were in the building on the floors that were affected? What I, do you I think? Say, I mean, I'm one one office out of 20 on that floor, so I have no idea. How how far above you or below you was the uh, impact? I think it was up us above us. I don't know how many floors. We saw it on TV, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. What's the first thing you thought? Across the street from me, it lights just sort of dipped and, and went out and came back up again. And I and I looked up at the tower and just saw this huge plume of flame and smoke shoot out with like debris like ticker tape parade uh, quantities of debris like just the sky filled with little pieces of bits and it was coming down uh and and when that happened the people on the street the street just turned and were like running screaming uh and uh uh then slowly the people started to come back uh uh Reports from eyewitnesses who were on uh, Highway 110, which is just uh, west of the Pentagon. One eyewitness claiming that he saw a U.S. Air 737 plane headed toward... All right, let's uh, listen in now to WTTG's coverage there outside the Pentagon. This is coming to you from the Washington, D.C. area. Okay, thank you. Hello? The Pentagon... The Pentagon, the world's largest office building, being evacuated. I'm here to lower Manhattan uh, and basically try to get into this fray. They are, we are standing right here about 10 to 12 blocks north of the World Trade Center. These fire uh, firemen that you can see, firefighters, firefighters are walking down towards the site now, and they literally have been arriving by the dozens over the past hour or so, uh, as we say, probably in excess of a thousand or more uh, emergency workers from New York City and surrounding areas converging on this site now to try to make some sense of it. As you can imagine, at this point, there is a certain level of chaos because they're just trying to sort out who's alive, who's not. We did speak to, as I said before, some of the... So those officers going in here, as you can see, all kinds of fire workers going in there, literally in the thousands now converging on this site. We cannot give you much of an organizational sense beyond telling you probably what you already know, which is that two separate aircraft have struck the two towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, if memory serves, uh, I think each of those towers stands 110 stories. Uh, some of the dust, as you can probably see now, is blowing in our faces. It just really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we're enveloped in some of the dust and the smoke. Uh, as you can see from these pictures, uh, the amount of dust from the fire that's still burning, uh, flames and ash, is extraordinary at this point. Uh, and at least a few emergency workers have said that they really aren't so sure that other tower won't stay up now. Uh, they really didn't think the first one was capable of coming down, but it did. Uh, and so they're basically saying, keep back as far as you can. Late enough in the morning that there would be enough people uh, that there would be enough people on those floors that the loss of life and certainly the injuries would likely be extraordinary. What you are looking up now, looking at now is a close-up of the enormous hole in the side of that building. Uh, that is exactly what happens when a plane hits the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, the uh, Trade Center number one, as it is known, collapsed. Within the hour, an aircraft crashed into a, a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon, and the west wing of the White House was evacuated, among other places. The Pentagon has been evacuated, the White House, the Capitol, the Sears Tower in Chicago, and you see the billowing smoke that continues to come out of the twin towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. Joining and, uh, a large jetliner, perhaps two large jetliners, slamming into the twin towers. Come over this way, Pat. You can see Fine. the chaos. We can see the top of the building from here. Oh yeah. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, when it comes down, we're. All right. We do need to put it down now. I think we need to put it down now. Here we go. One collapsed just a short time ago. This now appears to be the second of the twin. America, offer a prayer.
According to American Airlines, American Airlines is confirming that its Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles was hijacked today and that its plane was the first one involved in this attack on the World Trade Center. Brian Wilson is on the phone with us now from the Washington area. Brian, what's the latest? Well, I wanted to tell you, John, that I'm in front of the Capitol, and a moment ago, police officers ran up to us and ordered us off of the grounds and told us, and I quote, there is a plane that has been hijacked. It is 20 minutes south of Washington. This was about 10 minutes ago, and is headed this way. They are taking... Manhattan, but we don't have a handle yet on the devastation. I, I remind you again that there are perhaps... 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Centers, uh, the two towers, and, and those towers are... And, too, we should tell you, there is the Pentagon. The Pentagon was also struck uh, by a, what we believe to be a hijacked plane. It has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. The nation's Capitol building has... Here again is the number two tower of the World Trade Center come crashing down to the ground in a horrific scene of destruction wrought by a terrorist attack on America. Uh, before that tower collapsed, an eyewitness said it had become so desperate that he saw people literally jumping out the windows of that tower to their death. When the initial plane attack occurred, another eyewitness said bodies were falling to the ground from the upper levels of this 110-story structure. The scene that you are viewing is from the opposite side of the Hudson River. Uh, the Twin Towers sit on the lower end of Manhattan, uh, virtually in uh, the southernmost tip of Manhattan, uh, not far off from uh, where... ...phones in their ears. This is... The, the, in a cell phone society, and it's certainly true in the Middle East, people on their cell phones all the time seeking and offering reassurance to their families and their friends that something has happened. In Israel, and at least those who have them in the Palestinian territories these days, there's constant traffic on the, on the cell phones because there is such tension in the region and such tension here today, which is extraordinary, that people wanting everywhere to reassure or find out about what has happened to those who are near and dear to them. Uh, let, let one me... thing we should update for people listening, particularly in this area, who may have been worried, uh, there was a concern that if this building... You mean in the New York City area? Yes. There was a concern if this building fell that it would land on uh, the center they had set up at Stuyvesant High School where the, the students were still there. The reports from Stuyvesant High School now are that uh, everybody there is okay. Stuyvesant High School, the high school in the adjacent area which the, the city and the state authorities set up uh, to deal with the casualties that they could get out of the building or had occurred uh, adjacent to the building. It is just clear that a lot of people, we do not know how many, uh, got out of the building. And it is going to take time. It is going to take time. The New York City Office of Emergency Management, um, which monitors the city and all its vulnerable points, said when this whole thing began this morning, they could not get an immediate handle on, on precisely uh, what was happening and it was only you've seen this before this is a this is a recording of uh, of precisely what happened when the second tower went down and this is from a very long distance this camera is located on the edge of the Hudson River on on, on the west side drive up the western side of Manhattan and ataques a las torres gemelas eh, hijo? con mi hijo uh -huh. pero mi hijo está en, en otro lado y yo llegué acabé de llegar aquí a mi casa ¿Usted mi ha hijo fue el con... que vio todo porque él estaba más cerca del trabajo él, él trabaja en el World Trade Center usted ya habló con a la, de la parte izquierda de sus imágenes eso ya casi es el Midtown de los Estados Unidos de, de la ciudad de Nueva York sabes lo que me aprieta el the service unit uh, they are trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter and many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive certainly that picture tells it all many of them just happy to be alive at this point uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. As we said earlier in our report, 110 stories each. Uh, I will tell you that what fell, what I saw fall, had to be at least 40, 50 stories of that building at first. 
the skeleton was left at about, I would say, the 50 or 60th floor after the shell, after the uh, structure of the building fell down. The, uh, the skeleton, the 30 seconds before the skeleton collapsed into the street, that was the last Let's break away from uh, Pat Dawson, if we can, Center. for a moment. Lester Holt here at MSNBC World Headquarters from the Associated Press, Dateline Pittsburgh, large plane crashes in western Pennsylvania's. Uh, they're citing officials at the Somerset County Airport who confirm it. Again, AP reporting and citing the Somerset County Airport. A large plane crashes in western Pennsylvania. That is all we have. This comes uh, um, quite a time after the FAA uh, put essentially a ground stop. All airplanes in the air were allowed to continue to their destinations, but every uh, commercial air airport in the, in the country right now is closed. Uh, but again, uh, the news just gets worse and worse. A large plane crashing in western Pennsylvania. Uh, NBC's Ashley Banfield is in Lower Manhattan, the scene of the chaos that you're watching unfold live. A corner restaurant that's allowing us in. It was as though, it was, I swear I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like this. This whole place looks like a war zone. There's debris everywhere. It's hard to breathe. And when that cloud came at us, I could feel it, the, the force of it. And I, it was as though, an, I mean, an instant took over. We just had to breathe. And we, Ashley, we're gonna we're gonna let you collect yourself. Right. Obviously, the priority to anyone who was watching in the New York City area. Stay safe. Uh, Ashley, uh, get to safety. We will talk to you in a bit. We want to get to uh, Pat Dawson again, who is on the west side of the Trade Center, who was uh, covering the scene from the mayor. At least a dozen emergency workers this morning, police and fire. The loss of life, uh, in the words of one, has to be terrible. There's just no, simply no way around it. Covered uh, in smoke and, f and floating debris. And what's missing? The twin towers of the World Trade Center, 110 stories high. You are looking at the pictures uh, from, oh, the last half hour or so as the first tower simply collapsed on itself. This, and look at the debris raining down on other buildings. Imagine the horror. Uh, now, here comes the second tower. This is the one that had the TV antenna on top simply imploding on itself. 110 stories, the uh, workplace of some 50,000 people. America, the uh, loss of life here is going to be tremendous. Molly Falcon. Information that situation in Pittsburgh. Let me read directly off the Associated Press. Uh, a large plane crashed uh, uh, just north of the Somerset County Airport, 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The plane, I just lost it on my screen, believed to be a. Uh, uh, yeah, I've lost it on my screen. Believed to be a 767 is what uh, I think I read there. But again, um, uh, let's see. Kim's bringing me more information. Here it is. All right. Uh, believed to be a 767 crashed about 10 o'clock Eastern time, eight miles west of Jennerstown. Uh, according to 911 dispatchers, we don't know the airline. But again, here's a look at a Boeing 767. This is a big airplane. In fact, this is a 400 model. You're looking at the, 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 the newest and the largest. But traditionally, the 767, most of those in use carry about 250. 50 people, a wide-body airplane uh, often used on transcontinental flights, also trans and Atlantic. Uh, it is 1045 right now on the East Coast. We need to update you, especially if you were just waking up, just tuning in. It is a day of catastrophe from Washington to New York and now to Pennsylvania in what appear to be a series of coordinated terrorist attacks. You're looking at a live picture of lower Manhattan and no longer... ...much as if the whole city were under, under attack, whereas probably it's a, it's a two or three... Well, clearly, uh, some terrorist experts that I've spoken to this morning say this has the signature of Osama bin Laden, that he has had uh, pilots, uh, although these apparently may be at least two hijackings, but he has had pilots on his payroll, three of the uh, of, of alleged conspirators who were involved in the East African bombing trial here in New York uh, had pilot's licenses. Not to say that that's what happened here, uh, but they seem to indicate that this would have that signature. And, John, I'm hearing of a figure of 10,000 uh, here in New York City, perhaps, for, uh, for casualties on the World Trade Center. And it About 10 minutes after 9, a jetliner slamming into the World Trade Center after an earlier jetliner, apparently hijacked by Amer from American Airlines, um, here is the, uh, the, the, the first of those towers coming down. This is the one that was actually hit by the second plane. It was hit lower. There was more weight on those steel girders 
that had been damaged. And here comes the second tower, the tower with the uh, signature television antenna on top, both of them simply imploding in on themselves. Our Shepard Smith has a view of uh, much of what's going on. He is on a... Thank you for you that. ...series of eyewitness reports. Uh, from Washington, Federal Protective Services now says there was no car bomb at the State Department. We've been uh, reporting, uh, which was reported earlier... In a situation like this, we know that also... An education trip to Washington today. Sorry. Uh, David Diaz, stay close. Yeah, what, you know what, while we uh, we're awaiting right now a further report from our Todd McDermott, who's been working the information on the phones all morning long, we want to reiterate to parents as you're watching this whole scene unfold, there are schools in that area, as you're well aware of, and those children in PS 89 and PS 234, students from those schools have been taken to PS 41. Students from PS 150 have been taken to PS 3. Those students are under what's called lockdown. They're not being released. And at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah. by the plane? After, about 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. Yes, I was right there. I was in the. I was down in the basement. Came down. All of a sudden, the elevator blew up. Smoke. I dragged the guy out. His skin was hanging off. And I dragged him out. And I helped him out of the out of, to the ambulance. Thank the words of the words of some of the witnesses here in Manhattan this morning, and the pictures. <laughs> of what will, I suspect, before this is over, go down as one of the most horrific days okay, in our lifetime. We're joined by our colleague, CNN's Jeff Greenfield. Aaron, you know what? In 1993, when terrorists bombed the World Trade Center, certainly they were shaken up. People who, who didn't really see anything just see a, uh, a huge dust terrorist or whoever. The other point is that some of the callers are coming. Uh, com uh, United Airlines parent UAL uh, has now put a ground stop on all of its operations worldwide. Uh, we don't. 8.30 8 to 9, you figure the building would have been approaching full capacity with the workers. So we are talking about roughly 10,000 people per tower. Per tower. Um, now, uh, at this point, obviously, you've got a situation, have these towers having collapsed, that is bordering on chaotic. How, what's the first challenge? What are you doing at this moment? It's kind of hard to say, you know, West Broadway, Reed Street, but if you look down here, follow me down, you can see what it looks like finally, Chris. Down West Broadway, into that plume of smoke, that was where those World Trade Centers once stood. And you can see people milling all about. Emergency vehicles are trying to get through this area. Police are trying to wrangle people to clear the way so that they can get through. Just look at the ground. Look at all the debris everywhere. The dust, the mess. A lot of the uh, emergency vehicles that have been going through. This is a Fort Lee ambulance, so obviously they're calling in from every district surrounding the New York area. We've seen sheriff's vehicles. We've seen Port Authority acting as traffic supervisors and trying to wrangle people out of the way. But this is incredible because now sort of the sun has come out and it looks almost, this is about 10 to, 10 to 15 blocks north of the Trade Center here. And uh, the ambulances personnel were handing out these uh, masks for people to wear, but they're obviously... Uh, commerce in our nation and the World Trade Center, as its name implies, World Trade, it is the uh, North American headquarters for a lot of uh, global companies. And uh, as the story continues to unfold and become... Some people in desperation were seen leaping from the towers before they collapsed. More buildings are being evacuated uh, downtown. Byron Pitts is there. Byron, they're now evacuating buildings around the World Trade Center. Yes, Dan, we're about three blocks away from the World Trade Center at uh, P, but they may be caused by some type of gas explosion or natural gas leaks in this area, and firefighters are extremely cautious as they try and work into the area. What they're doing now, Lester, is lining up on some of the adjacent streets and setting up as what you know from covering stories like this, field forces, where they tell them, don't go out and freelance, don't go out on your own, stay in a group, we'll move into an area. Not happen. 
We'll try to get more information on that for you. We do want to break in as we recap for you that Newark Airport has been evacuated. Again, Newark Airport has just been evacuated. As you know, airports across the United States have been shut down. All air travel has been stopped. Uh, we do uh, also want to tell you about the plane that was forced down near Camp David. There was an attack on the Pentagon. We do uh, have confirmation now that a second plane that was due apparently to attack the Pentagon was forced down by F-16 fighters. Let's go. They came through our airports the way you and I came through, but they must have another way to get here. We've got to find it out. That's our obligation. Meanwhile, it's the obligation of every citizen to remain calm uh, and to do what you can to help your neighbors remain calm and to wait for work. Likely to be more trouble given the coordinate coordination and the scale of these devastating attacks this morning that's a Boeing 767. Now, on a typical day, there'd be some 4,000 flights of all different aircraft, including military, general aviation, commercial aircraft in the... Board Air Force One, but exactly where he is, the Secret Service will not say. David Schuster is at the Pentagon, where uh, there was that strike by that third aircraft earlier today. Uh, David, what's the latest? John, we can now report that the fire here at the Pentagon has spread from beyond the E-ring, the outside ring of the south side, to at least two, maybe three of the inner rings. And looking at pictures now of the Pentagon, there is a gaping hole... Uh, at least 100 to 150 feet wide on the south side of the Pentagon where five floors of the Pentagon have collapsed. The fire officials, the firefighters are pouring water onto that side of the Pentagon, but we can literally see now that a fire uh, has spread and has broken out at least now about uh, 300 feet down away from where the firefighters uh, are working on the fire. And so now fire trucks are pulling up to this other side of the Pentagon. We believe this is all, of course, related to the one airline crash. And officials, again, uh, now saying that the, all of the U.S. air aircraft have been accounted for, that this was a silver jetliner, perhaps American, perhaps United, that hit the, the outer rings spreading from the south side towards the north side. We, Our office in the Pentagon is actually... Uh, in the north side city and people go to the top of them on a regular basis <laughs> so that they can see the huge surrounding area including i might add right in their face the statue of liberty on a day like today. Force collapsed again just a few blocks away from us we were standing out here on church street when both towers came tumbling down and each time there was a huge cloud of smoke and debris that came roaring down this street and everyone literally ran for their lives. At this point, the police have uh, been efforting to establish a perimeter. They're trying to keep people back and make sure that no one gets uh, interferes with their job, which is to try and uh, secure the area and then get inside that World Trade Center rubble to see whether or not they can locate any survivors who may have been inside the building or just outside the building when it came tumbling down. Uh, we want to bring in Mark Walsh, who's a, a, a freelancer for Fox. You live just a few blocks away and witnessed. Dude, I, was, I, was, I live on the 43rd floor of a building, which is five blocks from the World Trade Center itself. I witnessed the entire thing from beginning to end. People talk about how it looked like a movie. I know when I came walking down here early this morning and saw both towers on fire and people on every street corner, it was, it was, Dude, it was like a movie, but you watched the planes hit the towers. I was watching with my roommate. It was approximately several minutes after the first plane had hit. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. Uh, obviously, there were, there were a lot of people inside the buildings at the time. Two guys um, from the 7th Precinct, uh, the 1st Precinct, the fire department right here, the 7th truck, they, those guys are all right there at, at ground zero when those things went down. And God bless. I know there's a lot of guys there that were around there, and hopefully they made it out. What was happening around you and the streets around you as this was all going down? Absolute pandemonium. From my viewpoint, up 43 floors, I could see people running like ants, just absolutely scurrying for their lives. Billows of smoke coming through the streets, just walking down the street, just pushing everybody back. And then several minutes after, it looked like it had just snowed over the entire area. Yeah, the, the, the debris, the soot was thick on the street. You, there's still a, a, a dusting of it out here. Uh, but but when, I, when I was standing here and, and the towers collapsed, we, we saw police officers running for their lives, screaming, get back, get back, get back. And I'll tell you, that's a wake-up call when you see cops running for their lives. And people, too, women's pushing baby carriages, that sort of thing. Building and the uh, emergency exit uh, lights came on, strobe lights and everything. 
that we were out of the building and, and gone in, in a very little short time. As Pentagon employees, what have you heard over the years about the possibility of terrorist attacks? Uh, we've speculated myself. I've been here 11 years, and I've speculated myself that we're we're in the uh, air uh, uh, airway here to uh, National, and uh, it would be very hijacked. Now, Senator Chuck Hagel, Republican of Nebraska, says, "Well, what we had said early in the morning." But this is the second Pearl Harbor. I don't think I can overstate it. We called it earlier the Pearl Harbor of terrorism. Uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, this was a series of coordinated attacks. In the case of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, uh, devastatingly effective. This is a live picture of the smoke that's been bellowing out of the uh, collapsed Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. And no doubt it will go on for hours into the night and possibly on into the uh, morning. Now, I want to show you the sequence of events that happened with those Twin Towers this morning. The aircraft came from the right. I repeat, this is an actual photograph, not just a graphic made up by us. Flames spewed out of that World Trade Center tower. Then one of the towers began collapsing. The hope was it would be only partially collapsed but the hope was not fulfilled. The tower came down. And then as that awful fact was being absorbed, the second World Trade Center collapsed. Witnesses below screamed, some were caught in the avalanche of cascading debris, concrete and steel. The mayor of New York says there will be a tremendous loss of life. A police spokesman, speaking anonymously, said many thousands have died. In Washington, where the Pentagon, an aircraft came down at or near the Pentagon, uh, another aircraft reported uh, near, uh, crashing near Camp David, the presidential retreat. There's some doubt about what the facts are in that situation. To get an, a live picture at the Pentagon now, to sort out uh, some of what's happened in Washington, we go to CBS. More than 175 firefighters. This, of course, brought hundreds more. And their job is to go through the building and, uh, and bring those people out. And there's really no telling at what stage of the evacuation they were at or how many of them were still inside when the first America so that as they try to account for each of those flights they are uh, are scrambling to figure out where all of them are and there is a brief recap of exactly what has happened so far today as Bill mentioned to the Pentagon well it appears that we may have lost the phone connection with Jamie McIntyre we're going to try to get that restored Immediately, Jamie, Jamie, are you there? Now we have uh, Bob Franken, our Washington correspondent. It was not a job of ordinary people. It could have been the work of governments. Uh, Osama bin Laden cannot do this work, neither us, said the Taliban spokesman to the Reuters news agency in Kandahar, which is a city in the southern part of, uh, of Afghanistan. This could have been the act of either in... ...set up inside the offices of the, of the Virginia Department of Transportation office here. Uh, and people are really right now just trying to find out where everyone is and try to coordinate uh, what's going on. Chris, what's the U.S. response to all of this? Well, uh, right now um, we have been told by uh, U.S. officials that uh, two Navy carriers in New York, that is uncertain right now, but we do know that two carrier battle groups are getting underway from Norfolk and heading up the eastern seaboard as we speak. Chris Brown, uh we're listening to that. Um, what do you anticipate would be uh, the next, the next right, move? Rick, Rick, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right. Rick, I, I held up the Redmond Hart Commission that said we were going to get attacked like this. We were a sitting duck for a terrorist attack. It would hit hard and it would hit soon. Where did we fail? I don't think that we necessarily did fail. This is a, a, a very free nation. There's no nation in the Arab newspaper that Osama bin Laden planned this kind of an attack very soon. He said it would be an unprecedented attack. 
uh, clearly that statement has been made and the intelligence community was doing what it normally does in trying to uh, by, by this government in, light of, in, the, in the light of viewing it as an act of war. I think that that means that the, the Congress acts to support the President of the United States in any actions that he needs to take to make sure that those who are responsible, whether they be governments or they be individuals or groups of individuals, uh, that whatever measures need to be taken. Evacuated, except for top personnel in the Situation Room. Uh, the Capitol has been evacuated. I've been injured. Do you have some sense of the magnitude of casualties? Uh, we don't want to quantify a number, but obviously it's a horrific incident that uh, uh, that really is, is just an, uh, an incredible outrage against the people of New York and the people of America. Uh, but uh, at this point, our focus is on trying to make sure that those whose lives are still at risk are as protected and those who have been injured are treated as quickly and as well as possible. Governor, do you believe that thousands of people have been killed? Uh, I don't want to use a number, Peter. At this point, the goal is, uh, is simply simply to try to help as many people as possible. We're working closely with the city, with our National Guard forces coming in to help relieve the, the city police and fire. Uh, obviously, it's a situation that uh, just cries out for uh, people to, to be horrified. And, uh, but what we have to do at this point is focus on uh, helping those who are at risk, helping... Uh, oficiales de American Airlines. Okay, ahora puedo. vacío el, eh, eh, los, los eh, counters, los... los en los lugares donde se, se, se le da servicio a la gente y en este momento nos están empezando a, a sacar del aeropuerto. Bueno, muchísimas gracias Jaime García, informándonos desde Los Ángeles, como nos acaba de decir, están evacuando el aeropuerto internacional de Los Ángeles, uno de los más grandes de Estados Unidos. Y Jorge, también nos llega información de que las fronteras, tanto de Estados Unidos con Canadá, como la frontera de Estados Unidos con México, están siendo cerradas, o sea que ya no puede haber flujo de, de personas ni, ni siquiera legalmente. Ah, hay, hay varios puntos de cruce eh, entre México y los Estados Unidos, en Texas, en California, eh, y también en los Estados Unidos con Canadá, que, que se van a cerrar y no se va a permitir que ninguna persona entre, eh, ni siquiera para medios comerciales, a los Estados Unidos, ni tampoco que ninguna persona salga. O sea que estamos también eh, cerrados, aislados totalmente del, del resto del mundo. Hay ciudades claves en los Estados Unidos como Washington y Nueva York que están cerradas y ahora los Estados Unidos como país está cerrado al mundo, los vuelos no salen, los vuelos no pueden entrar y todo esperando a ver cómo puede este país reaccionar uh, ante este acto terrorista, sobre todo cómo puede protegerse para que no uh, existan institute as well as he's making this approach. Uh, this was a plane that would have then come straight into the Newark International Airspace, LaGuardia, JFK, all in that area. So clearly other planes had to have been aware that there was a rogue airplane in the sky. American Airlines only given us a brief statement saying it lost two airplanes. We don't know the nature of any conversations that took place between the crew, between the air traffic controllers. They also have their own private data links between the cockpit and the airline headquarters when they have a, a mechanical problem. An airplane can squawk what's called squawk a certain code on its transponder. That lights up at the air traffic control center. It's a code that says I'm being hijacked. There's no voice communications, uh, but if the pilot can somehow serotypically uh, uh, punch in that code, it would alert someone to at least know this plane is in trouble. Uh, on the phone with us now is, give me the name again, Kathleen Zici with the New York NYU Medical Center. Kathleen, can you tell us about the casualties you've received there? Yes, I'm with NYU Downtown Hospital in Lower Manhattan, and uh, the last count that I have, we have several hundred uh, casualties here. Uh, several hundred patients here who are waiting to be, um, who are being treated. Uh, we have at this point three fatalities. Um, we had one severe, very severe burn case. Uh, the, uh, the entire medical staff has been mobilized, as has the nursing staff, and they are proceeding in a very orderly fashion to, to treat the patients as they arrive. Kathleen, I know hospitals such as yours practice disaster drills. That's Have you ever correct. practiced for anything on the scale of several hundred casualties in your emergency room? Uh, yes, it has. In fact, it has been practiced as, uh, as recently as two weeks ago. We had a full-scale disaster drill at the hospital. So what? tell me what happens now. People come, are coming by uh, foot, ambulances. How are they getting there? They are coming by every mode of transportation that they have been arriving in. Police. Volunteer from surrounding areas, volunteer fire departments and others. We're working with them now to do that, to try to relieve our fire department. It's a horrific day, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
uh, there's no possible way to begin to describe it. Uh, no, there is to, not. To see, to see uh, what happened there is, of course, it makes you very, very angry. Uh, it's almost impossible to describe the level of anger that you have that somebody or someone would do something like this. And Sir. all of the good and wonderful people that were affected by this, there's no, there's no reason for this, there's no excuse for this. And there's uh, something like this, there's something you, you never thought you would live to see. I couldn't agree more, sir. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. New York's Mayor Rudy Giuliani. On what was to be an election day, the mayor not up for re-election because of term limits, but the election has been postponed. Jeff, I, just uh, step back for a second. Well, that's you what know, I'm... You talk about anger, Sorry. and we stand up here and we look at this and we've all... Image. William Daly and Howard Safer. William Daly, a former FBI agent, who investigated the first World Trade Center bombing. Let's talk about the bigger picture once again. Sure, the terrorists wanted to inflict maximum damage, maximum loss of life, but their real goal is mental, isn't it? Aren't they trying to scare America? That's true, John. In fact, my, my role was one after, after the incident in helping uh, put security back in place for these once prestigious locations. And the thought is, when we do security planning and, and try to predict where terrorists will attack, we always think of what are the spots that are indicative of the American way, whether it's the World Trade Center, whether it's some other landmark or what they call trophy building. We look at these, but we, we really, at the very far end of the spectrum, would think that it would ever come down to something like this. We always looked upon something worst case, like uh, vehicle bombs we saw in Oklahoma City or we've seen over in Europe, uh, individual bombings. Uh, we uh, also cannot forget that the most crushing human drama is taking place at this hour in the city of New York, where I think it can be said conservatively that the number of deaths will end up in the hundreds and thousands. Uh, the New York City mayor has indicated uh, so much in his comments. Our own Monica Novotny is at St. Vincent's Hospital in Greenwich Village, where they are getting a huge uh, share of the, uh, the uh, casualties in this. Monica, what can you tell us? Well, Brian, St. Vincent's Hospital is one of the two main trauma centers in the area where victims are being taken. A spokesman came out just a few moments ago. These are the numbers that he gave us so far. 184 patients brought in. Ten of those are in critical condition. Long enough to withstand this kind of attack ultimately gave way to the heat of the burning fuel from those aircraft. You can see there the pictures, uh, people who have broken out the windows. They cannot breathe. They are leaning outside, uh, waving handkerchiefs, towels, anything they can, waiting for rescue. Rescue that almost certainly never came. Uh, the towers crumbled one at a time. As you're looking at the replay here, in a tremendous shower of shattering glass and concrete, almost certainly there will be casualties in neighboring buildings because the World Trade Center towered so tall above the buildings around it as it fell, there'd be steel beams, girders, chunks of concrete in all the outer ring of the Pentagon. Now, this one could, could have been worse. We have early indications of perhaps three dozen people dead, uh, but it appears that the impact of that plane actually came on the ground outside the Pentagon. So the fire is still burning there, the Pentagon in flames. Uh, clearly, this was an attempt to strike at America's financial structure, the symbol of America in many respects, the World Trade Center, uh, the, the tallest, the most visible buildings in New York, uh, New York City, right alongside New York Harbor, and also a strike at the, uh, at the Pentagon, the center of America's military. Center explosions in New York City. The death toll is now estimated at 10,000. This out of New York and this, according to the Pentagon, that there were undoubtedly deaths at the Pentagon as well. Representative Jim Moran, coming out of the Capitol Police headquarters, has just told Fox News on camera, again, he is a Democrat from Virginia, that the official estimate now is 10,000 have been killed in Lower Manhattan as the World Trade Centers collapse to the ground. We're expecting to hear from the President shortly, John. All right, Shepard Smith, thank you. And that, uh, that death toll, uh, suffice it to say, could certainly go up. There were thousands of people, perhaps, among them some of New York's uh, finest and, and bravest, police and fire. Uh, and Bush, he was in pictures of people scrambling away from the dust cloud resulting uh, from the collapse of the World Trade Center. President Bush was on the ground in Florida, 
He was uh, to address an elementary school on what was supposed to be an upbeat event promoting education in this country. President Bush is safe. Air Force One took him to Shreveport, Louisiana. We expect he will be addressing the nation momentarily. Uh, once again, the U.S. military is on the highest state of alert. Uh, uh, this, this, the kind of alert that would have emanated from the uh, Pearl Harbor attack. And as uh, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich said today on, on uh, the air on Fox News, certainly this attack will bring with it more casualties than the American... Perfecto, eh, eh, masivo, ¿no? Tenemos una información sobre el presidente de los Estados Unidos porque mucha gente se pregunta dónde está el presidente George W. Bush en estos momentos. Lo vimos... Bueno, probablemente no en la Casa Blanca. Hace algún rato no está en la Casa Blanca, no está en Washington, estaba en la Florida, estaba, estaba visitando Florida, una escuela. En y en estos momentos se dirige a una base de la Fuerza Aérea de los Estados Unidos en el estado de Luisiana, es decir que desde el estado de la Florida se dirige a una base en Luisiana. No sabemos eh, qué medidas... Eh... Murder of people, they can somehow achieve a political purpose. They can destroy buildings, they can kill people, and we will be saddened by this tragedy, but they will never be allowed to kill the spirit of democracy. They cannot destroy our society, they cannot destroy our belief in the democratic way. You can be sure that America will deal with this tragedy in a way that brings those responsible to justice. You can be sure that as terrible a day as this is for us, we will get through it because we are a strong nation, a nation that believes in itself. It is a terrible day in the United States. The uh, situation there, some live picture from the Pentagon um, of officials there in the hall. And here is the president. Here, it, I'm sorry, this is the president to make this statement. This is Barksdale. This is tape, folks, not live. Folks, it appears there we saw the president start to come under coming in properly, and it is not uncommon at broadcast facilities when tape like this is being fed. We're going to have another go at it here now and, and see if this time we can hear this taped remark from the president. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. We see what's happening here and see it more clearly this time. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, Eric. and freedom will be defended. Eric. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake. The United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens 
and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. That, that concludes the president's taped comments from Barksdale. Our policy was very clear from the very beginning, and we have criticized, and even now we criticize terrorism in our response. Can you rule out any involvement by Osama bin Laden? Osama bin Laden last week, he kissed the Yahad. Kumya kissed the last week, and I said, Kiri, 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 Kiri. Terus Polisya, Pangawa Nya Rabbi Tuhur Hamla di Lekdo Ali. No, after now, no one has blamed or accused him for money. No one has blamed or accused Osama bin Laden directly, but uh, you agree with other experts that this has his signature, the Al-Qaeda terror cell. Yes, I mean, uh, this is a not uh, unsettled. Uh, now, he said if American civilians got in the way, that was sort of their problem. Uh, so at that time in 97, he was really only calling for attacks on American uh, military targets. In, later, that uh, position evolved. By, by 98, he was calling for attacks on all Americans, whether civilian or military. I think the rationale behind that thinking is that, uh, in his view, if you're an American taxpayer, you're subsidizing um, the anti-Islamic, uh, quote, activities that, uh, that he's against, whether that's in Saudi Arabia, uh, with the American military presence there, or with America's support for Israel in the, in the ongoing uh, intifada. Jeff. Peter, thank you for your work today. I suspect we'll get back to you. Uh, but we appreciate the, the background, which I think... ...systems are down, traffic is almost non-existent. We travel here by cabs, which are not on the streets. Uh, John Scott, back to you in New York. Fred Smith, thank you. I want to bring in uh, somebody who has uh, kept an eye on this kind of situation over the years. Bill Richardson, the former Energy Secretary and UN Ambassador, is joining us by telephone. The Secretary Richardson, this is an appalling development. I can only ask for your gut level reaction and, and what should America's reaction be? Well, first we have today, and this is part of what we're talking about. Earlier today, two Navy FA-18s were seen coming down the Hudson River on patrol. This is a live picture. This is from the roof of this television network. Right now, a swept wing uh, U.S. Navy jet fighter is in the skies over the city of New York. In a free nation, this is not a sight people are used to. Chris Jansing, what are you seeing up on the roof? Well, the first thing that happened... Uh, who did it? How do we get at them? Uh, how do we hit them hard enough that nobody ever tries to do this again? But I Collapsing. I am very worried about them. And, uh, you know, saw some of them rush in and go in and was with them. We, we were in a building that was uh, trapped for a while. So when we left, I could see... But they were going to, we, we, there's no question there are going to be significant casualties to our uh, emergency personnel. What, it, it's terrible. What do you say to the residents of New York City right now? Job. Dangerous. That it is. You worried about that other tower? Personally, I am. But you're going back anyway. I got fellow officers that might be trapped. I'm trying to be a hero. But I think if you were in this position, you'd do the same thing. Good luck. I would only hope that you would. Good luck. And uh, a, a member of uh, New York's finest going in, uh, New York's bravest, I should say, that's a firefighter, not a police officer. Uh, an all call went out early this morning. All shifts, police, fire, night shifts, day shifts, support personnel, all officers, everyone in management, all brass. Get to work. You are needed somewhere. New York was shut down. Nobody in, nobody out. Child like your nature, rhythm, you have it or you don't, that's a fallacy, I'm in them. In New York City and in um, Washington, D.C. that are set up to help people, um, there we have disaster mental health counselors that are, that are able to, to meet with people and to uh, register people uh, as they come in and uh, are trying to, to get away from the situation. Uh, we are set up in New York at Penn Station, at Grand Central Station, and in Washington, D.C. at Fort Belvere. Um, it is still chaos right now. We are in the process 
of ramping up our operations while we do now. No matter where you are in the country. Yes, well, no matter where you are in the country, or you can, you know, c contact your local hospital if you're not in a Red Cross area, but 1-800-GIVE-LIFE is the best number to call. Okay, so even if you are far away from the events of today, uh, you can still be helpful, uh, as there is certainly in New York and in Washington. Uh, are going to learn, as we look at the, our re review of the images of this day, are going to learn that their loved one is not going to come home from this. There are going to be prominent Americans who we will learn have died in this, uh, perhaps uh, more than one uh, very prominent financial executive, uh, uh, someone who one day was a captain of American industry, and uh, the next uh, uh, dead as a result of this uh, incredibly uh, tightly coordinated terrorist attack in New York and in Washington. We're watching these pictures. Fuck and disbelief, I can't really explain it. Ashley, thank you uh, for that from Lower Manhattan. New York has just been ripped apart today. A uh, massive cleanup and rebuilding effort that will now have to take place in New York. These scenes are absolutely extraordinary, and they are uh, happening in a uh, civilized society. Let's go to the mayor of the city of New York, Rudolph Giuliani, live. Days in the history of the city and the country, the tragedy that uh, we're all undergoing right now is something that we've had nightmares about, but probably thought wouldn't happen. My heart goes out to all of the innocent victims of this horrible and vicious act of terrorism, acts of terrorism. And our focus now has to be on saving as many lives as possible. We have hundreds of police officers and firefighters who are engaging in rescue efforts in lower Manhattan. One of that a friend and a colleague here at Fox News has killed has been killed in one of the plane crashes barbara olson you know her as a very familiar face as a frequent commentator on the fox news channel and other networks she is also the wife of ted olson the bush administration's nominee for solicitor general he was also very much involved in the uh, in the bush effort working out the uh, the contest over the vote more information of exactly what has happened to the four total planes that have gone down to american airlines to united airlines all but that are all also being deployed where they will be set it's not clear right now we are expecting a briefing from the pentagon actually not from inside the pentagon but from pentagon officials in a matter of a couple of minutes that will clarify exactly what they're doing but now in addition to the pentagon being at threat con delta we understand that navy installations all up and down the east coast have also been put on threat con delta that is the highest level of alert for the u.s military with the uh, aircraft carriers coming into New York to help with some of the hospital response, we take not misunderstand the pictures that we see on the screen. These are some Palestinians in parts of Israel celebrating the attack. We should make it clear that this is separate from the official response of Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Mr. Korb, a question about what we do in terms of a military response. People have already begin ta be begun talking about when we are likely to respond, how we are likely to respond. From your term as the Assistant Secretary of Defense, explain to us how something like this works in terms of a response at the Pentagon. Well, you have to find out uh, who did it and, and uh, you know, how you can get to them, but it's much easier said than done. Uh, we still haven't held any... We'll do just that. Uh, whether or not the United States will, will it be said that this is a case of forgetting who the customers are and uh, that you've got a nation full of shaken up people some kids have gone home from school and uh, as you mentioned it might be nice to to see that the top levels of government are are functioning and up and running it, it's uh, it's it's very disconcerting and rare to not know where Air Force One is headed how many times does that happen in a lifetime uh, certainly not in mine uh, I remember certainly some of the uh, seismic events in my lifetime, the assassination of, of John Kennedy, uh, certainly was one, the bombing, Oklahoma bombing, and it is essential at those times of mourning and healing and crisis and tragedy uh, that we be, in fact, bound together as an American family. Uh, but that's ago that uh, the first of these events started unfolding. What a calamitous day for America. And yet uh, you know that somewhere in the world uh, somebody is watching these pictures with great glee. Uh, watching the pictures of the hijacked airliner, the second one of the day, smashing into and ultimately demolishing the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, uh, the symbol of capitalism to many people around the world. Uh, they want us to be scared. They want us to be afraid. 
as we heard. Uh, we here at Fox News have also learned that a friend and a colleague was lost on that airplane that crashed into the Pentagon. Her name is Barbara Olson, and you may have seen her many times on this network and others. Her husband is Ted Olson, also a famous face. He was uh, nominated by the Bush administration to be Solicitor General, was heavily involved in the Bush administration effort uh, during the contesting of the Florida vote during the presidential election. Barbara Olson made a phone call from that flight, apparently, before it crashed into the Pentagon. We have learned that she is presumed dead, and we say that with great sorrow. And we will learn, I'm sure, in the coming hours, many more people who we know, who you know, around America who were involved in these accidents and who may have been lost. Uh, there we see her picture. We're sorry to say goodbye to a friend and a colleague. Tragedy of Barbara Olson's death is going to be repeated over and over and over. And then While New York is considered such a major metropolitan area, for many people who live here know it is a small city. There was one nurse who was actually in the hospital emailing her husband immediately after that first plane crashed into the building. He also worked on a floor above that crash. Within a few minutes, of course, those emails stopped initially. She did not know why uh, until she tuned back into the news. So. People are very personally affected here. The staff at the hospital reacting with disbelief, but rolling up their sleeves and getting to work. That is the latest here from St. Vincent's Hospital in Greenwich Village. Brian, back to you. Monica Novotny, thank you for that and for your reporting all day uh, as we continue to, to gauge reaction and uh, almost uh, uh, find out people's uh, uh, advice on how uh, the U.S. That commercial airline crash in uh, Pennsylvania it was just about 80 miles from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The first reports were that this is the plane that was part of the coordinated attack this plane was supposed to be commandeered toward Camp David. Camp David, of course, being the retreat of the President of the United States. He never made it there. It Special okay. edition of the Chicago Tribune. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be available. Do we know yet? Or is that any word yet on when that Tribune's going to be available? Okay. It's already available. It is available. It is. Okay. All right. Frank Donahue, we heard from... I that. Um, let's go to NBC's Robert Bazell, who has been staked out all day long at St. Vincent's Hospital, which is very close to the carnage in lower Manhattan. I guess he's back now. Uh, Bob, what do we know about... Ca uh, how, how many blocks are you at this I'm point? about two blocks away. And then this cloud begins to... Come at you. Whoa. Just go. Uh, I was standing there with a cop and a fireman. There were probably about 20 people behind us. And look at uh, videotape of what happened here in Manhattan earlier this morning. Bob? Federal authorities have to figure out uh, over the coming days is how did this attack take place? I mean, how was it that hijackers managed to penetrate the nation's aviation system all at the same time at three of the busiest airports? Now, it's very important to know as we watch the pictures what exactly happened today in terms of a timeline. Uh, just before 7 o'clock. Diciendo claro que, que también sí. ellas son víctimas de, como indicaron anteriormente, tanto Natalia <laughs> como Liz, ahí las podemos escuchar, eh, cuando el viento sopla, toda esa humareda, pues también les afecta. I live. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind the car. It's uh, incredible. Okay, I had to go find people who need help. I don't think I'm one of them. You okay, sir? Okay. Can I just get a toot off your respirator? Yeah. Can I get a toot? Okay. I'm seeing a couple of clean breaths. Uh, that's good. Uh, okay. Back to you. car I hid behind. It saved my life. Yeah. Wait, maybe it was this one. There's 
all these noises. I think it, I don't know what it is. They say someone needs help. Yeah, Mike! Mike! Mike, come over here! Yeah! Anybody need a doctor? Where are you? Don't have oxygen. Hey. Hello, Doc. Hey. That guy needs some oxygen. If someone can share it with him. 10-4. Thanks. embassies closed and evacuated in different uh, parts of the country. Um, NATO officials on high alert across uh, Western Europe. That uh, obviously involves Canada. ...has never been exposed like this. The second hijacked plane flies into one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center and a fireball erupts around the 110-story building. The other tower was already ablaze after being hit by another plane only minutes earlier. Oh my God! One plane and one tower might just have been a terrible accident. That possibility was blown apart with the second direct hit. New Yorkers assumed they were reliving the 1993 bombing of this, one of the most famous landmarks of the capitalist world, but this was to be infinitely more audacious. Some of those trapped inside went to desperate lengths in the hope of rescue. The same desperation led others to jump to an inevitable death. There was pandemonium and panic in the streets around the Trade Center as the authorities tried to marshal people away from the area. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. We heard a big bang, and then we saw smoke coming out, and everybody started running out, and we saw the plane on the other side side of the building and there was smoke everywhere and people are jumping out the windows over there they're jumping out the windows i guess because they're trying to save themselves i don't know within the hour one of the huge towers constructed to withstand all but the most apocalyptic of events collapsed thanks very much yeah. collapsed. the whole side has collapsed the whole building has collapsed the whole building has collapsed the building has collapsed the attack was too devastating for the second tower as well, and not long after, it too collapsed, filling the streets with yet more debris and dust. Thousands worked in these towers. No one had any idea how many casualties there were, but that they were mounting horrifically was obvious. The mayor of New York predicted that the death toll would be tremendous and ordered the evacuation of South Manhattan. Its streets took on an eerie appearance now as stunned people tried to make their way to safety. But the terrorists, it seems, had other designs. The very heart of the U.S. defense establishment was another of their targets. A third hijacked plane came down in a steep descent over Washington and crashed into the side of the Pentagon, setting off another huge blaze. 
Apparently, the evacuation of the building had been ordered a few minutes before, but had barely started. A fourth airliner came down in Pennsylvania, some 80 miles from Pittsburgh. This was the scene at the aftermath of that crash. By now, Americans were starting to portray it as the worst attack on their country since Pearl Harbor. In the space of a few hours, the landscape of New York had been changed in an apparently coordinated attack that could barely have been imagined. The symbols of the devastation were as powerful as the devastation itself. Mike Wooldridge, BBC News. Safe. Gita Gurumurthy, BBC News. Amid the chaos, the FBI and its international partners are already trying to... I think even having said that, there were a lot of people still in that building, including the fire and police personnel, that were trying to come up. So, but, but my sense is that uh, and on our floor, a lot of people got out. And as you came down, were you joined by people on other floors? Is it a common yeah. evacuation yeah. passage it's, down it's, through the Well, building? the problem was there was only one stairwell open. Uh, the, other, the other stairwells were blocked by smoke. And so you had one narrow stairwell which is what led to the delay in the evacuation. And that's, you know, that's why it took so long to get out. We've told people in the rest of the country, fairly regular, the 50,000 people who work in the two trade centers, yeah. and you say 8.45 in the morning is a little late for New York City. Is, do you, well, do you it's have a any, little early. Sorry, a little early. Yeah. Uh, do, you have, do you have a feeling that a lot of people hadn't gone into the building at this point? Uh, I know in our offices, uh, you know, we're a law firm, we start at 9.30, and, and a lot of people were not there yet. Uh, some of the businesses which operate on Earth. Twin Towers, it just, it just it disintegrated instantly. It was the most awful thing I've ever seen. It straightened itself out and dove to the other side and crashed right in. An explosion was so terrific, it looked like it had dynamite in it. <laughs> First hell class, we were, we were back in there trying to bring people out. We knew the second one was about to come down, but we were lifting one person, and when it came down, we all just ran for our lives. You could hear the rumbling when you looked up, you could see the top of the building just crumbling. We all headed south, and you could feel the wind hitting in the back because it's the degrees hit. You couldn't see, everything was totally black. You were just walking, hoping to find daylight. It was just unbelievable. I never seen anything like in my life. I'm just thinking about the firemen I see going up the stairs behind me and look at half of this building. I don't know. A horrible day in the history of the city of New York, for that matter, the United States of America. This is live. A aircraft blew through the Twin Towers, World Trade Center, uh, some of the most frightening and striking videotape images. You have to remind yourself this is not a creation of Hollywood. Just been handed a piece of paper that says that uh, senior U.S. intelligence official telling NBC News that, quote, in this, if you can stay with the graphic, the first one shows uh, the blue is uh, Boston to LAX, and note uh, that flight diverts. The second one is Boston LAX. It takes a New Jersey route and then veers right on into the New York area. Um, the, the second one is notable as it was taking a much more southerly route to uh, Los Angeles, but uh, both of them... Some people were forced out of the building, some leapt, forced out at very high floors and leaped to their death. Eyewitnesses, several eyewitnesses described one man and woman holding hands as they leaped and plunged to their death. Terrorists directed two planes into the towers in the middle of the morning Russia. Speak in hospitals and in places where they cannot 
be reached. I think even those out there who may not believe that there is a God, at a time like this, we all reach out for a higher being, and we want to believe that there is someone who can bring us salvation. Jamie McIntyre. Todos los pedazos de las de las dos torres que cayeron y que lo y que lo afectaron. Distintos ángulos de la caída de la primera torre. Eh, todavía estaba en pie y fíjense, uno ve a la otra torre y la piensa intacta y sin embargo sus entrañas se están deteriorando a una velocidad extraordinaria porque el fuego está consumiendo una estructura en los pisos altos, está doblegando lo que son los soportes interiores y en minutos la segunda torre también se vendrá abajo. Este es algún colega que eh, tuvo la desgracia de estar en el momento en que se derrumba el primer edificio, eh, estamos seguros por lo que sabemos que salió ileso, pero vean cómo avanza la nube de los escombros y cómo comienza. Ven que dice en vivo, en realidad esto ocurrió. Obviamente no van a estar diciendo a este punto, pero... Bueno, no lo saben. Sí, es Pedro, lo que... Bueno, que... well, we also saw... A big truckload just now coming out with, with what looked like a bunch of civilians in it as well. I don't know whether they were uh, residents who, who lived in the area, but I told you before that, uh, that the woman who came through here with her baby, they were told they lived about five or six blocks away from that now collapsed building. They were told to move out of the vicinity, and clearly they did that with only about 10 minutes. Uh, facing the American president tonight as he takes to the airwaves and uh, tells a uh, jittery public that the government is up and running and just fine, and that the people who did this today to the United States carried out these coordinated attacks on New York and Washington will be... ...told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh my God. Look behind us, please pan in this way, please. Be careful of your baby. This is it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. No. We're, listen. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. We're okay. Ashley! I think we're okay. Ashley, I think we're okay. All right. We're going to have to move this way. We're going to have to move. We're going to have to move. That cloud is coming this way. Yeah. Ashley, get out of there. Leave the camera on, man, if, if you uh, need to and get out of there. What we've been fearing all afternoon has apparently happened. We were watching number seven World Trade, which was part of the ancillary damage of the uh, explosion and collapse of the other two. And that was all day about a few moments ago in Lower Manhattan. Moved. The building has since come down. Uh, we're joined, uh, we're still joined by uh, military and security analyst Dan Gray. Uh, uh, Dan, you know, as we continue... Um, the uh, pay for people to find out about loved ones. Um, one of those airlines is United, is their number is 800-932-8555. Uh, but they are saying that people should stay. The whole building's gone. I beg your pardon. As you, it was the collapse of the first tower. Now let's go back over. This videotape we've not seen before. Jesus! The tower that was hit by the first plane is still standing. It won't be for long. Remember this all happened this morning between 9 and 11 a.m. In the second building, now you saw, we'll show these videotapes to you in sequence. First, you have the videotape of the plane coming, and it was coming at pretty high speed, yeah. much greater speed than the first plane that. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! The whole building's gone. The whole building's gone. Indeed. Holy fucking Jesus! We do apologize for the language on the videotape. Um, now, one can understand uh, people seeing this incredible sight. And when you see this, you're reminded why Everyone in authority is saying oh we should be prepared for eventually finding out many dead, many seriously wounded from a different view than you've seen it before. This is again new videotape. One of the World Trade Center buildings has already collapsed. The second, the actual first one to hit by the plane is still standing. It is a smoking ruin in its upper floors. These 
these World Trade Center towers have absorbed a tremendous shock of fast flying airliners. Highly inflammable aviation fuel. The one building has collapsed. Oh no! Oh no! And once it starts to go, how quickly it went. These home videos taken from across the way from a place that once had a spectacular view of a spectacular New York skyline. And the smoke. That's, uh, Peter, it was uh, an astonishing thing because the, the civilians who were standing around here were all amazed, but things have become some... The ones you're familiar with are the two towers. This is the first one that was hit. Tower one was hit by an American Airlines uh, 767 initially. That was a little bit before 9 o'clock. Tower two was hit by the United Airlines plane uh, a short time later. Tower two, though, was the, uh, was the first one to actually go down. That was the first collapse followed by Tower One, and then just a short time ago, this building, number seven here, number seven World Trade Center, it, it is not a huge building when, when compared to the two main towers, but that one, which had burned for much of the day, also collapsed in smoke and dust. Ashley Banfield was right down the street as it happened. Let's roll that tape when number seven went down. Please be careful of your baby. Oh my God. Look behind us. Please pan in this way. Please be careful of your baby. This is it. That's the building coming down. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. No. We're, listen. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. We're okay. Ashley. I think we're okay. Ashley, I think we're okay. All right. We're going to have to move this way. We're going to have to move. We're going to have to move. That cloud is coming.